also a poster. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're a poster, but I don't think it's considered a felony. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I guess it depends on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and then one last question. Is you, uh, sorry, but you could I? Yeah, we have other people, yeah. but in the interest of fairness and time, can we yeah. stick like yeah. one or two points per position on stack? Yeah, yeah let's do that. Um, I have you in the red and then your section. All right. Um, I just want to hear about like your vision for the future. Do you really see like vegetarianism being possible in like at, like in a capitalist society? Like you really? Yeah, I think we'll get I mean, there. I mean, going back to like Chunka, like talking about the poor. You know, like how like when it's just cheaper to buy, you know, a $1 cheeseburger at McDonald's. Well, it's cheaper to... because of the subsidies, right? I mean, I think it's going to take an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of education to get there. But yeah, I think we'll get there eventually. I think we'll get to a point at which we stop denying the scientific facts about other species, um, recognize the environmental catastrophe that is the meat industry, and move toward vegetarianism. And I, I take a lot of solace in, in looking at, like, anybody in this room in favor of slavery Anybody think women shouldn't have the right to vote? 200 years ago. I mean, Socrates said the unexamined life is not worth living. 2,500 years ago, for 2,350 years, it was considered acceptable as a basic means of human interaction that some humans held other humans as slaves. For 2,400 and whatever years, so 1920, we passed the 19th Amendment. So 90 years ago, we got around to saying, yeah, maybe women are rational enough to have a say in governance. So yeah, I mean, I, I, take, uh, I take a lot of solace in how quickly we can change ethically, you know, so that nobody in you know this room and very few people in society, maybe Rush Limbaugh and a couple of his buddies, um, continue to deny what we all know to be true about basic ways that humans should interact. I think we'll get there on animal issues as well, absolutely, and, and probably a lot quicker. Okay, well, I, I see that, I understand that, and I think we'd all agree that you know slavery was fucked up, but I, I think it's more like <laughs> cigarettes. Years ago. I feel like it's more like Which cigarettes, is, though, where yeah. people understand the, the the problems with smoking cigarettes, and yet they do it anyway. People see, like, people hear about the problems with eating meat, but I think it's beyond that, you know, like, it's it's an addiction, or it's just they have no other choice but to do that. I mean, we're not a cooking nation, you know, people people don't even know about the processes that it, it takes to... That's I mean, the, the, the reality is that other species do feel pain in the same way and to the same degree that we do. For the same reason that most people wouldn't eat a dog or a cat, I think people are going to come to recognize the moral inconsistency in eating an, any animals. Um, if that doesn't happen first, I think the environmental, you know, reality will come. Will, we will come very up close and personal with it, you know, awfully soon. So, um, yeah, I think we'll get there. We'll either be forced to get there, um, or our moral evolution will get there, um, and and probably not too distant in the future. I have two questions, but I'll wait for my next turn on the stack to ask the second one, since there have been a lot of people waiting. Um, to quickly rebut your point about Monsanto's anti-competitive practices, uh, see Food, Inc., which uh, your compatriot cited, uh, it detailed the anti-competitive practices it's engaging in with corn seed, whereby it targets poor farmers whose corn has been cross-pollinated by neighboring farmers using Monsanto's stock. Um, also regarding pain, check out the Pain in Animals page on Wikipedia. It's a great place to start. Um, my question is for you, Bruce. Um, you claimed, uh, regarding the environmental aspect, you said that 20 calories are consumed by livestock. I think you said chicken per calorie that we can consume from them. Um, this seemed to imply that plants produce calories for free. Um, but this is clearly not the case. I mean, they get some from sunlight, which is zero cost to the, the system around them. Um, but do you have any information about the um, energy ecosystem around livestock as a whole or around plants as a whole? Um, I think the argument could be made, um, I don't espouse this argument, um, but I think it could, the argument could be made that there's a energy difference and possibly an energy savings um, for transporting livestock products um, from the, the site of production, to talk about it coarsely, um, to the site of uh, consumption. Uh, versus vegetables, uh, since there's a difference in mass and volume, et cetera. Yeah, and the, the point that I was attempting to make was that we are growing massive amounts of corn, alfalfa, soy, wheat. We're growing those crops, and we're feeding those crops to animals when we could eat those crops directly. And it takes 20 calories of these crops that we're growing, fed to a chicken or a pig or a cow, to get one calorie back out in the form of that animal's flesh because the animal burns up the vast majority of those calories simply existing. 
And that's just the 20 calories in, 20 calories out, the mercenary relationship that we engage in, whereby basically 20 plates of pasta are thrown away for every plate we eat if we're choosing to eat meat. It's actually quite a bit worse than that. I mean, you're, now, for vegan foods, you still have something that's energy intensive and polluting, you know, growing those crops, shipping them to the Samuel Adams, you know, plant, turning it into the wonderful vegan Samuel Adams beer, shipping that to the grocery store. But uh, for meat, it's about four extra stages that wouldn't be required if you were just eating vegan foods. So you still have to grow the crops, but now you're shipping the crops to a feed mill and you're operating a feed mill. You're shipping the feed to the slaughterhouse, you're operating a slaughterhouse, you're op shipping the animals. Um, to the processing plant, you're operating the processing plant. It's all these extra factories that are unnecessary if you're not eating meat. It's all of these extra stages of gas guzzling, pollution spewing vehicles that aren't necessary if you're not eating meat. So environmentally speaking, the point that I was making you know, specifically was that yes, it takes energy to grow crops, but you're basically throwing away you know, 19 units of that energy for every unit you're consuming if you're eating meat. So I guess my question is mostly uh, about specifics. Um, is that 20 calories just the, the 2,000 calories that you cited about us just sitting in bed doing nothing? Or is that 20 calories in the whole process? Well, is, is that just 20 calories into a chicken to get one calorie out in the form of chicken flesh. Right, is that 20 calories of energy um, including um, you know, transportation, no. uh, slaughter, etc. No, 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 it's I'm just sorry. Energy they consume. It's just okay. yeah. It's it's okay. exclusively the crops that are fed to them. You have to okay. feed a, a chicken 20 calories to get one calorie back out. And then livestock's long shadow looks at all of the extra stages of production, all of the extra extra power plants, the feed mills, the slaughterhouses, everything else, um, and points out that it's actually quite a bit worse than that. But uh, you know, to make it as intuitively easy as possible to understand. You know, the point, the mercenary relationship environmentally that I'm saying we're engaging in is you're throwing away fast quantities of food. Like nobody in here would throw away food. Most of us think that it's environmentally, you know, unconscious and unethical to throw away food. Each time you choose to eat meat, you're throwing away vast quantities of food. You know, not you personally, but it's a mercenary relationship. You're paying somebody to waste massive amounts of food. Thank you. Bruce, I have a, hey, can I? Yeah, you can, because that's where I was trying to put Okay, I, I have a, a quick question. I mean, isn't there some, like, a reciprocal relationship there? Doesn't the, the agricultural industry rely on, like, manure and other byproducts of the livestock industry to, to propagate? And if that were cut off, what would the environmental cost of, I'm asking you speculate, I guess, what would the environmental cost of synthesizing these fertilizers elsewhere? It's almost all synthesized now. I mean, the more manure is fed back to farmed animals than goes on the crops now. Well, I, I, my, my dad actually grows avocado in Temecula, and uh, like a lot of their fertilizer comes from uh, urea, which, as I'm, uh, as I, as far as I know, is distilled from animal urine to get all the nitrates. And um, one of his partners is a organic avocado farmer, and he uses chicken. For lack of a better term, chicken shit to, to fertilize all, all his crops. So I, I don't see some, yeah. No, I mean some of it is. There's there's vast quantities. The, the uh, Senate released a report. Gosh, it's been a decade ago now, but the Senate uh, Agricultural Committee released this report um, in which they looked at animal and manure specifically. This was before global warming became the mega issue that it is, and they were arguing um, that the animal overload just on manure is the single greatest threat to our topsoil and our waters. Um, because animals raised for food in this country produce about 86,000 pounds of manure per second. It's about 130 times as much manure as the entire human population of the country. Um, and that in itself is a huge, huge uh, ecological nightmare. It's another thing that the UN report talks about. So when I put that quote up there about deforestation, topsoil erosion, desertification, water pollution, I mean, animal manure also contributes in a big, big way. Do you have any information um, about where you're going to this? Yeah, I have the room now, so, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you.